Welcome back here to the Mountain Morning Show. Well, my next guest, the list is so long. He's a professional multi-sport athlete. He's been featured in Warren Miller films since 1995 when he was ripping it up over at Squaw Valley. He is also <clears throat> a stunt coordinator for films like Hangover 3, Fast and Furious 7. He's also the executive producer of the Telly Award-winning series, The Line, which was uh, produced and also nationally syndicated by our parent company, Deerfield Media. He's the man, the myth, the legend, JT Holmes. How are you doing, man? Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. We're excited to have you. It's been a week, kind of a buildup of uh, kind of getting ready to, to have you here. So let's uh, talk about how you got to be, to get to the point where you're jumping out of planes, your wingsuit flying, your base jumping, but it all started with skiing, right? Yep, it all started with skiing and then uh, Shane McConkie introduced me to a parachute on June 22nd of 2002, the day after my, t day after my 22nd birthday. Wow. Um, it was just uh, three hours away from here in Twin Falls, Idaho. At the time, I was actually living uh, in Pinebrook, right here in right Park here City. Right here in Park area. City, yeah. Yeah, and going to University of Utah, skydiving out at uh, Ogden. Sky oh, really? Center, yeah. And wow. Occasionally, we'd base jump even uh, just over here uh, in Echo, Echo Canyon. At Echo Canyon, yeah, at just the, at the, the, near the reservoir. Yep, just, wow, just east that's of so us. cool. Yeah, so it was a really fun time of my life, actually, when I was here. And I also was working at the Utah Olympic Park. So you spent quite a little while here in Park City, living here, skiing here, base jumping here. I, I do want to learn and talk about the first time you did base jump in Twin Falls. What was that experience like for you? Mm. I mean, I'm sure it's hard to even put into words. It's, it was, it's, it's just really dang fun. Making a base jump is really a, 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 really ton a of good fun. time. Yeah. Um, you know, as a skier, we like to go fast. Absolutely. And we like to catch air. And we like to feel that acceleration. And when you go and make a base jump, you're getting this very potent dose of those things. Of both those things. And you've kind yeah. of helped to pioneer um, what is now known as speed riding, uh, which is something that you do a lot now. Let's talk about how speed riding, how has that changed your perspective on what's possible on skis? I mean, you said as a skier, you love to go fast, you love to get air. This kind of combines both of those in the extremes of, of both of those, right? Yeah, absolutely. So speed riding kind of gives you a fourth dimension on skiing uh, because common hazards don't really apply okay. as in oh there's a big cliff and um, instead of you know needing it to be just right and you got to have the perfect conditions and steep landings and stuff you can land um, on firm snow you can land where it's flat uh, if there's a forest coming you could probably fly over fly it. over that if need um, be and what what it does is it allows you to uh, kind of trans transport yourself from one awesome place to ski to the next. Okay. And uh, yeah, skiing the inaccessible is really kind of my favorite part say, of speed it, riding. Does it open your mind in terms of terrain, like what's possible in riding terrain? You kind of just like the possibilities are endless now. You can pretty much ride anywhere that there is snow. <laughs> the, the possibilities are definitely endless. And there's also, there's a, just a, a mountain transportation element of, of using these, these small wings of ours. Um, I've got one set up that's only about three pounds, and I can when I put it in a vacuum bag, it's about the size of an encyclopedia. So you put it in your wow, your backpack and don't worry about it. And then what we can what we do is we'll go ski something normal, um, and then when you run out of snow um, or when it's you know going into the avalanche gullies or whatever, then just lay out the glider and use it to transport yourself. Uh, back to safety. Wow, that's really cool. So you, like you said, you can kind of go anywhere on the mountain that you, that you can see really with your eyes. That's pretty, pretty fun. Let's talk about uh, how you've been working on some films and stuff like that as well. You worked on The Hangover 3 and Fast and Furious 7. How has that been a, a, as a stunt coordinator for, for that? Is that kind of a different world than, than what you're used to? Um, yeah, it is. <laughs> Completely. It, it's, <laughs> it is it's, uh, it's a lot different than making ski movies and whatnot. Um, it's a much better business model. Um, typically, we don't get paid when we go make ski movies, yeah. um, which is kind of silly. I don't know how us professional skiers <laughs> seem to justify um, that sort of business model. But um, when you go do uh, things, um, Hollywood type stuff, you uh, you do get paid. And if you do, you know, the more dangerous stuff you do, or more, you know, if you're drawing on it. A specialty skill set or whatever you, you earn a little bit more money so I'd say that's really the difference and the other thing is um, that there's kind of uh, resources and so that they're able to 
you know, see to these wild visions, you know, I was something, say, so something that's pretty lights crazy. gets lit on fire. Um, you know, there's specialists that, you know, tumble down stairs and crash cars. <laughs> that's their specialty is the stair fall. And that's what they specialize in. But that's really cool. Like you said, something that's a, a vision that can be kind of unachievable, it seems like, can be kind of more possible in the world of Hollywood. As you said, they have exactly the right. resources available to you to kind of make that dream happen. So has it been fun to kind of be able to play with your creativity in that sense, to be like, I can kind of go a little bit more above and beyond with the stunts? It's dream come do. true, man. Dream come That's true. That's so awesome. Well, congratulations with that. There, there's uh, actually some, um, the Coleman's, Doug and Eliza Coleman, okay. spend a lot of time here in Park City, and they're, you know, top level um, stunt. stunt coordinators. Coordinators. Yeah. How does one get into that? Do they have a background like like you do where you're kind of just an extreme athlete and then you kind of get into that? Or do people train their whole lives to become a stunt, stunt coordinator? I know that a lot of people have backgrounds in martial arts and, and things like that as well. Yeah, that's but. correct. Um, I think there's uh, some of, a lot of time it's family. Okay. Um, you know, you hear people, oh yeah, my uncle is a, a coordinator <laughs> or this or that. And, uh, and then I think uh, the other way is to get um, called upon for a specialty skill, which that's how, that's how I got kind of in, got into the for. Screen Actors Guild and whatnot. It was from um, Michael Bay wanted wingsuits in Transformers 3 okay. and called me up to do it. Because you were the expert in that field. So that's, that's really cool. Let's talk about your work with The Line, which is a Tele Award winning series that we air here on Park City Television. It's nationally syndicated by our parent company, Deerfield Media. What is it like to be able to be an executive producer of your own, of the, of the show, and to kind of be able to highlight some friends of yours as well as another, uh, other great, amazing athletes from all around the country? Yeah, it's been, I enjoy making television shows. <laughs> um, the, uh, I think that with our show, we give a, a alternate perspective on what it is that, you know, living the dream yeah. um, as the professional athletes. Well. I mean, yeah, people, you know, people are curious, you know, what, 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 is it, what is it to be a professional skier? Are you guiding? Are you coaching? Are you hosting? Are you taking photos? Are they being taken of you? Are you writing? Well, I think that's kind of the hard thing about uh, a professional sport like skiing is it's kind of, it's so non-binary like that, that there are so many different roles that you can play as a professional skier right. and you can fill so many different boxes. It's hard to put a box on what is yep. a professional skier because you go from one professional skier to the next and their, their experiences, one are completely different, but the way that they utilize their career and their, and their talents are completely different as well. So I think that's, it's really cool to me how you've been able to you know, uh, take your passions and be able to kind of make them your job, which is really fun. And it's an opportunity that a lot of people don't don't have. So I'm sure you feel really lucky to be able to go out every day and continue to ski and continue to pursue your kind of wildest dreams, really, and, and do the things that you want to do, which is a ton of fun. Um, was the progression into these other sports kind of like natural and linear or was it kind of more spontaneous? Um, I think it was very natural and linear. I, you know, like I said, when you're when you're a skier, you're you're making you're making decisions at a high rate of speed. Okay. And that is a skill set that applies to um, anything in the air. Agreed. Yeah. Um, so I think you know, and things just tend to get faster and so more fun. So the skills kind of just fun, transfer yeah. over, and, and like you said, you're kind of looking for just that little bit more, exactly. in essence, and, and it, whatever it is, it'll give that to you. So aside from skiing, you wingsuit pilot, you're a race car driver, speed rider, and a stuntman as well. Uh, what's next for you, man? What? How can this list get any longer? <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I have a bit of a white whale. One day I, I have to win the Baja 1000 sometime. Okay, that's In great. my lifetime. And uh, so we're gonna do, we're gonna, we're gonna go for it this year in November. How do you prepare yourself for that? You I have, know it's, you it's to be a very, huge race. It's, it's, very it's highly gear intensive. You okay. have to be really in tune with your vehicle. So tech, it's more technical than, than it is. That's correct, okay. yeah. And you, you need to, um, you have to have a really good team. And then you need to know when to push the car and drive fast because you're not going to win if you don't drive fast. But if you crash or get stuck That's or set you back yeah, a lot of exactly then or get flat tires. Um, so it's quite the challenge. Well, I would love to be able to see you race that, and that's coming up in November, and this is something that we can actually be able to tune in and see you see you do then, so you're, you're yep. going to go for it. Absolutely. That's going to be fantastic. That'll be really, really fun. Uh, what's going to continue to happen on the line as you continue to produce the show and continue to create new content? 
Um, well, we're, right now we're airing previous seasons, so haven't made television shows in a year or two. Um, but we'll see what happens. I don't know. I'm awesome. excited to do more. I, lo I love that, man. I love the attitude of kind of just like wherever the wind takes me, let's go there and let's have a good time, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Which is really, really awesome. JT, we're super excited to have you here for the, the Mountain Morning Show. Thank you. We're excited to have you as the host. So right now, I'm going to metaphorically hand you over the keys to the kingdom right now. Okay. You're going to be taking over. And from this point forward until the end of this week, it's going to be JT Holmes with some amazing guests, and I'm excited to have him here. Uh, be sure and stay tuned for the rest of this week. There's going to be some amazing guests as uh, today, JT is going to sit down with Nick Gepper, as well as Hagen Kearney and Nick O'Kane here from Park City Television. We're not going to go anywhere, so you don't go anywhere either. We'll be right back right here on the Mountain Morning Show.